felt that it really took me a decade to go from going blind and losing my identity and my confidence and all that stuff to it really took 10 years to, to move from that point to to feeling kind of normal again and I was feeling pretty good in the last two years. I felt that I'd cracked the blindness and so any demons that I may have had still with the blindness and um, life was good. I was planning all sorts of different things and new projects and I did the Round Ireland Yacht Race and did you write down what you what you've been up to? I, life can sort of drift by, but uh, the start of the year, start of the year was brilliant, and it's exactly what I wanted to be doing. And then in in July, started July, fell out of the window, uh, broke my back, and I'm now. I think I wrote in my blog, bla- blind, paralyzed, and broken, and. Um, and I think for the last six months, the, the reason I said that I was broken was because I was mentally pretty down. Um, all sorts of infections and difficulties and setbacks for the last six months, and I really couldn't see beyond the next day, the next infection. So up to this point, I've been, I've always been someone who who looked forward, set a goal and, and was inspired by that goal. But having broken my back and been lying in bed for so long, everything was really quite negative because I could only I could only look at, bring myself to look at the the bad stuff that was happening, the fact I couldn't use my legs, the fact that I was sick, the fact that I, I couldn't see a future. And just as I got back for a few days over Christmas, I it just feels like... I can start to look at the future now and I can start thinking about the future and being more philosophical. I suppose there were the big issues, like I felt that I'd cracked the blindness and then suddenly I'd been given this new uh, challenge to deal with. And then so those are the, sort of the, big, the big obvious issues, but... I was just being knocked back so much with the uh, with all the infections and being sick and taking all the antibiotics and fluids and everything that that I just it was like it was like trying to swim but never being able to catch a breath. I just I just felt like I was going down and down and down. And I don't think I get I don't think it got to the point where I gave up the the will to go on because uh, I'm still I'm still here. But I was certainly you know I was. I was on the I was on the brink of I was in as dark a place as I've been, put it like that, and um, and I think now I, I can start to see some kind of light at the end of the tunnel and some kind of future. When I got a chance to take a breath, I, I had to re reframe the problem problem not to just look at at the really difficult times, but to try and. Uh, to try and understand that I would get through each of the little challenges and to take them on um, and get through them one one by one. And I think the conversation I had with one of the clinical staff in, in Stoke Mandeville was to think back about how I felt a month after going blind and three months after going blind and six months go- after going blind and... Um, it did improve, so I was sort of drawing on previous experiences to know that you do feel awful, but it will get better, and if you can just stick in there, you can uh, eventually start to take control of things again. My language, I'm very conscious. I've always been conscious that you can choose to th- to to see things happening to you, and on that basis, you're out of control. You're a victim, uh, but at the end of the day, yeah. You have to decide whether you're going to lie back and let it all happen to you or whether you're willing to make a decision and, and get on with it and look to the future. And I'm, I'm moving towards that point now and I think, I think I'm more willing and more open to uh, taking control of things again rather than, rather than letting it all get on top of me.